everyone. Thanks for joining the Pinche Millennial Podcast. This is Pinche Participation. I'm Amanda Miguel. And I'm Nick Ochoa. We're two Latinx millennials sharing a fresh, relevant perspective on civics and political participation today. Yeah. This week's episode is about making a plan to vote by mail. Uh, because this year's election is different than literally any other election in our lifetime, yeah. we're going to be covering how to vote by mail and how to vote by person in two separate episodes. So tune in next week for more information on making a plan to vote in person. Absolutely. And because we're in this early stages of this podcast, we're open to any feedbacks, any ideas that our listeners may have for this said content. So if you have any questions, want to reach out, we are happy to get you connected so that you have those questions answered. So wherever you live, we're happy to look at just DM us. We're on Instagram. You can put a comment on our YouTube page and or mention us in your Instagram story. We'd love to reshare your questions and just continue this active conversation with all of you. So this week, we are actually planning to answer some of the questions that we've received thus far. Uh, and we're hoping to address that, if not through the episode, then at the last five minutes for sure. So please keep your ear- ears peeled so that we can answer some of those questions um, our listeners have sent us. Yeah. So, for example, in this episode, we have some specific content for listeners in our home states of California, Texas, and Illinois. But if you're listening to it in, an, in a different state, just let us know and we'll be happy to include more information uh, about other states going forward. Absolutely. And so, okay, so today's podcast, one, well, let's just say, what's up, Nick? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. Um, it's, t- it's tough. Everything's stressful right now. And mm-hmm. But si- siempre adelante, as my grandparents always say, let's keep going forward. You know, Absolutely. how are you doing? For me, I'm doing all right. This week was kind of crazy and exciting because we did release our first episode and just getting that all out there. We're now on Spotify and Apple. So all of our like, I don't know, right, you know, ride or die, like Apple folks and ride or die Spotify. We got you covered. okay? yeah. Um, And so that's super exciting just to kind of learn this process and then. Stress wise, I mean, yeah, we are in the less than a month out from election day. But as we all know, this is it's it's now democracy is happening now. Uh, And so this episode, right, this is what is your voting plan and the importance of why having a voting plan? Yeah, I saw uh, um, a post on Instagram, which I shared with some of my followers Um, voting is like planning a party. You like figure out what you're going to do and when and how you're going to show up. And I guess what you're going to wear, if that's, if (laughs) you want to do something like that. Um, and then ask your other people, or, Hey, are you going to the same event? Let's go together or I'll help you get there. Or, you know, asking someone to help you get to the event. Mm -hmm. Um, so making a plan is a movement that's taken off recently in the last couple of years about, not just are you going to vote, but how are you going to do it? Like if I ask my friends what their plan is, that's more likely to keep each other accountable. Well, I'm going here, I'm doing it on this date. Here's how I'm going to do it. Make it happen. So that's what this episode is. We're going to help give you some information to figure out what your plan is. Yeah. I mean, for, I mean, when you said, what are you going to wear? I'm like, you know what? I actually, I'm going to wear my vote necklace. This is a gift. And I'm like, I was like, you know what, man, I need to wear this every single day. For the next 30 days so yeah. to your question yeah what am i wearing to you know i think that's that is a consideration i think these yeah. days um so okay so we have our voting plan and we like anything right you run the risk there are some risks if you're not thinking about these things thoroughly so um one forgetting two not having enough time to get to your polling place right things yeah. come up life happens um, uh, there's deadlines already that have technically passed, which we'll address yeah. shortly. And which, which is why we released the first episode of voter registration. Cause that's literally the first step. And, and then the last part is what actually happens on election day. So we we're previewing that information, but today is kind of like, you won't know how to answer that until you kind of walk through what it looks like for your individual state. So that depends on this question is what is, how are you planning to cast your ballot? That's the first question. So that way your plan can then either be, I'm casting my ballot by 
dropping in the mail. I'm casting my ballot by going in and voting early, or I'm casting my ballot by going in person. So today, we're going to start our voting plan by addressing last week's kind of discussion, our voter registration. Yeah, just to recap then, um, voting registration is happening now. And as Amanda mentioned, some deadlines have already passed. So um, October 5th, which was Monday, was the deadline for people in Texas to register to vote. I hope everyone listening in Texas registered. I know I messaged people on Instagram. Hey, are you registered? Here's the the website. Um, You can check if you're not in Texas, you can check via vote.org to see if you're registered to vote. It's a database that redirects and helps you find out, is Amanda Miguel registered to vote? Yes. If yes, no other action. If no, then there's resources on that website as well that can direct you to your locality where you're, where you're living, where you plan to vote to get that information. Um, so there's still time to register to vote in some in many places. Uh, California, you can register online until October 19th. You can also register by mail in California as long as your registration is sent in by October 19th. Additionally, California is one of those states that has a great Uh, voting program and you can register on election day whenever you go to the polls to vote if that's how you choose to vote. In Illinois, you can register online until October 18th and the deadline for sending your registration by mail was October 6th. So that's already passed at this point, but don't worry for those people living in Illinois, you can still register in person through November 3rd at the polling place. So remember, November 3rd is the election day. You can show up in Illinois to your poll on election day and register right there, right before you vote. As we said, unfortunately, Texas registration deadline has passed. So um, at this point, if you're in Texas and you haven't registered, unfortunately, you may not be able to cast your ballot. So this is why we're very aggressive about uh, advertising ahead of time. Yo, get your registration. Right, right. All right, Amanda, once we've registered, what's in our, in our voting plan? That's, that's it. Well, step two is your voting plan. Like there is a whole process to not just showing up and like, I voted like what, what, what is actually happening? Right. Um, and this is, I, I want to preview something that California voters actually got this. I want to say even last week or maybe even more, um, we received our, um, what did I call this already? It's yeah. called my voting guide. I think that's what it is. Sorry, there's like a lot of names, Um, but this is the voting guide that every Californian voter receives because it's outlining everything that Californians will be voting on. So there's like important pieces in this one. We mentioned in the first episode that elections are run by state, correct? Yeah. But not everyone in the state lives in L.A. County. Not everyone in the state lives in, you know, San Francisco. Each part of California, each county, there's 48, 48, there's 58 counties in California. Um, and we all have different offices, different elected yeah. offices that we'll each be voting on in our community. But everything that Californians will be voting on together as a state is in this voter guide, which includes like all the propositions um, and essentially things that we want to make changes uh, as, as yeah. a, at the statewide level. This is kind of like the, the democracy part, right? Where we are literally deciding what is not only just, what's not only good for our own community, but what it's good for the state of California. And I think that independence yeah. is kind of, I think a shared understanding and a shared pride amongst all um, party participants. I've gone a little bit of tangent, Nick. I'm sorry. Did you want to address anything I've shared? That's all right. Well, I think that packet that you just showed is great. It's a guide. It's a manual for voting because there are so many things that end up on ballots. You're maybe you're voting for the mayor, your congressperson, president, but then also maybe mm. normal everyday things like yeah. how does our trash collection get funded or how do our schools do we are we going to raise a tax to give the schools more money, whatever, it varies for every county. Um, So that guide is really brilliant of California to do to inform its voters, because this is a lot of stuff, like, right, not not everybody goes throughout their life thinking about the tax for the school that we're going to raise, or who, how our government pensions get funded. Those are like, not everyday questions. So normal people aren't 
we're not thinking about this 24 seven. This is, mm. it comes up during elections. The habit guide is really, really, really great of California to keep its voters informed. Absolutely. And I apologize. This, this is the, where I was going with why I brought this up now <laughs> is that the voting plan has to happen like now, because right. look how thick this is, right? That's a lot of information. Yeah. This is a lot of information and it's in a really important process of being informed and like making the choice for yourself. I know, oh my gosh, the commercials that are happening right now on television are all political and okay. This is not what this podcast is about. I apologize. But just so you know, there is a lot of information sharing that is happening in this yeah. time frame. So you understanding how you want to give your vote is really critical so that you have the time then to make an informed decision and you feel really great about casting your vote. So let me get back into the two ways right now that we're going to be discussing and highlighting, um, you know, we're going to either be voting in person or you're going to be voting by mail. That's your two avenues. And so today's discussion, we'll be talking about voting via mail and walking through right. that process. And so why, why is that important? Nick? Why are we talking about voting by mail today? Yeah, well, because this is an unprecedented election year mm -hmm. with the state of our public health emergency, you know, coronavirus is still spreading throughout the country. Yes. We've seen in the last week some very prominent elected officials getting infected and that's those are serious things but it's not just 1600 pennsylvania avenue dealing with the coronavirus it's bakersfield california mm. it's houston texas it's el paso and it's chicago and every other place in between coronavirus is still very much a factor as tired as we may be yes. now what six months into this pandemic mm -hmm. the virus doesn't have a track of time so it's still out there and as humans we need to react so we're talking about voting by mail because it may not be safe for you or me or your family members to go in person as we traditionally have over the years to vote your local precinct. So states and cities are now have been thinking for months about how to get people voting by mail. So elderly populations who are at higher risk of infection or those with suppressed immune systems or plenty of other at-risk folks that rightfully may not want to put themselves in the position to be out in public with lots of people for an hour or more to cast their, their vote. Uh, so if you know someone who's a high, higher risk person, a uh, person who's at higher risk of infection, or if you are an elderly person who doesn't want to risk their health, and rightfully so in my opinion, uh, then consider voting by mail. And they, I believe most states have that option. Some states may not. Mm -hmm. um, and to your point of, you know, making that choice for yourself based on, you know, your, your concerns is, is valid. And th that is why we have processes that do allow this mail-in ballot. So as mentioned before, um, equating mail-in ballot to absentee ballot is valid. They're the same things. They're yeah. the, it's called absentee ballot because you cannot physically be there. So you're absent from, you know, participating in person. And that's what that well, how else do I give that if I'm not able to come in person? It's it's physically through the mail. So um, I I remember for this, the primary election helping um, the grandmothers in our family to ensure that they were prioritized because this was at the height of yeah. uh, coronavirus. And so uh, I was like, no, 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 no. You, we're going to make sure that you get your ballot sent to you because we're not for going sure. to risk our lives to, to mm -hmm. exercise our right to yeah. vote. And that's why this ex this process exists. So in, you know, the last re in recent months, those two terms have been thrown a lot, thrown around a lot, but they, they are the same thing. So yeah, it's potato or potato. Yes. And it's the same thing. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so so some states will call it mail and some states will mm -hmm. call it absentee. Yes. And if you hear out in the national media, like absentee ballot is this, but mail in ballot is better. Right. They're the same thing. So let's put that to rest. Let's just debunk that myth. There's no reason to be afraid of absentee ballot, but not mail-in ballots yes. or the other way around. Thank you. Uh, so just trying to get some more information out there. We know there's a lot swirling around and yes. hopefully those of our listeners take value in hearing, hearing this. Um, and so voting by mail, we have to talk about deadlines, just like voter registrations have passed for some places voting by mail. You need for some places you may need to request Hey, I, I can't go to the post. I can't go to the polls. Please send me a ballot. Um, and some other places just are automatic. So, for example, California in May, the governor of California issued an executive order 
declaring that all eligible registered voters in the state will be sent a ballot by mail, point blank, period. If you're registered in California, the governor said, we're going to get you a ballot. So you don't even have to request it in California. And I think that's awesome. Like letting people who are interested, willing and able to vote, we're not going to give you another step that you've got to do. Right. We will make sure you can get your voice, your vote counted. Um, so that's great. It's a wonderful example of state officials looking out for their people, but just keep an eye out on your mailbox for something official from the state of California. Don't throw it away. Right. Open it. Yes. Uh, what about in other states, Amanda? Yeah. I mean, for, I don't know if I've shared this thus far yet, but I, but I, I want to say folks who heard like the first 30 seconds of last week's last week's podcast would know 100% I'm not from LA. And that is because I am from the Midwest, baby. I am born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. And yeah. that, I don't know what word I said. I can't even recall. <laughs> but it you totally can hear like a Midwest accent. And that is, so to the point of other states, we wanted to highlight what Illinois is doing. So listeners in Illinois, things are a little bit different for you all. This state, you... Um, because it is a mail-in ballot, it is an absentee ballot, you will need to request it. So, and you need to request it to be sent by mail. And I know we, we should really be sponsors for Google or influencers for Google because we <laughs> say this every single time. But there's, it's, it just varies and, and, and information is really critical to get it by, by state. So you can Google Illinois mail-in ballot request and visit the Illinois State Board of Elections website to download the application. And depending on your signature needed, if you have a state ID or a driver's license that they can cross-reference, that's the main method that the state conducts uh, verification of identity. So okay. with that in mind, that is why we kind of highlighted, you know, if you don't have a state ID and you have to get that this month to verify your signature, to verify a photo, because you need a, for some of these seats, you need a photo yeah, alongside right. that. That's another process um, independent of the voting process. So it's this this identification component. And so when you download that application, oftentimes you must sign it so that it matches the, the signature they have at the state level or they'll cross-reference it um, with your existing piece. So that's why registering new voters is, is, is such targeted um, support systems because it's, it is – being like part of the system, <laughs> which sounds kind of creepy, yeah. but it's, this is, this is currently the process we have. And so understanding that we, in Illinois, the state must receive your request for a mail-in ballot by October 29th. And so what will often be, which is very close, right? October 29th is just a few days before November 3rd. Mm -hmm. So if you yeah. think about that and thinking about, thinking about all like the, the record number of voting that's going to happen this year it is very imperative to just do it now um, so sending in this request now if you're already registered for that absentee ballot for your mail-in ballot yeah um, and likewise in texas for those of our texas listeners you if you want to vote by mail you must also request your ballot by mail um, and you can dm us and if mm -hmm. you want to figure out um, how you can get that application to, to receive your ballot by mail. I just went to votetexas.gov right now, and there's a PDF form that I could download and fill out. I don't live in Texas anymore, but I used to. So um, if you do and you want to vote, even if you're living in Texas now and can't go to the polls, you can download this PDF, fill it out, and send it in, and you must send it into uh, the Texas address by October 23rd. So it's a little bit sooner deadline than the one in Illinois, mm -hmm. but send it in now because the, re the request must be received by October 23rd. So I would say the deadline for you to send it is maybe like October 19th or 20th, depending yeah. on how far you are from uh, how long mail takes to get from where you are to Texas board of elections. Mm -hmm. um, send it in now. Like you don't want to put up, it, it'd be a headache to put up the weight with last minute, problems you know there's been some questions about slowdowns in u.s mail service lately so that really the sooner you get that application in the in the mailbox the better off you'll be in the higher chances that you mm -hmm. can get your mail ballot 
your ballot by mail. And speaking of, I'm thinking through like right process wise and, you know, our, our listeners, um, I, I want to say are cued in, right. And I'm thinking about the special populations in their lives that could use this support and thinking yeah. about a PDF. Okay. I ask, I'm going to ask my abuelita, yeah, what is a PDF? She'd be like, mm, yeah. I'm not, right. Or like, you know, the other folks that we know are just going to need support. So that 18 to 24 age bracket, older adults, because you don't want them to go in person to cast their ballot because they could put their health at risk potentially. And, um, and non-traditional voters in your life, right? How do we make this as simple as possible? And even when we say PDF and Googling, like the access to a computer is yeah. kind of necessary at this point when you're doing things online. If I were to figure out through my phone, which I will say most folks will have ha access to uh, right. cellular devices, right? Um, that may, they might have to pull Wi-Fi from a community center or a library or just like a public, uh, public Wi-Fi access. Yeah. I think it's also uh, important to just highlight uh, how you, uh, the Beach Millennials listening, um, can be an advocate for the, for those people as well. Yeah. So if you have a grandma who wants to vote by mail, but she of course doesn't know what a PDF is and doesn't use the computer, yeah. uh, you could take it to her. If you have the access to a printer and a computer, you could take the form with her and say, all right, grandma, let's, let's work on this together. I'll help you fill it out. If your relative in question doesn't speak English, but the applications in English mm -hmm. and you speak, you know, both languages, you can help them and send it out for them, take it to the post office. Um, I know things are a bit complicated with coronavirus. Maybe it's not safe for you to go to your grand's house and help her fill it out. But uh, it's important that we talk about populations that don't have access to the internet, to computers, to printers, or, or a car to even drive to mm -hmm. the post office. You know, these are all important things. So keep an eye out for people in your community who, in your family, in your circle, who want to vote, who need help. And if you have questions about that, please DM us. I know over the past couple of weeks, I've helped some of some folks from high school get in touch with how they can register in their state. I had a question from a high school friend who said, I, I'm, I moved with my husband in the mil who's in the military to another yeah. state. How do I figure out where to vote and how to do that? Yeah. Um, so I got to asking around and Googling and helped her figure out her registration. So um, Jenny, if you're listening, yeah. You're in the podcast, and thank you for teaching me something about how military re military relocated folks can vote. Uh, awesome. Learn something new every day. Yeah, this is, is this is a super fun process for us all, and we're sharing dates with you, things that you can verify online exactly. Um, and the part of this podcast too is walking through these humps together, and you know. Coming to this is this is a community, right? We're we're really looking to how do we participate together? Um, so again, use us, leverage us, and we'd be happy to uh, continue to uplift any resources that we find. Um, and to, I know we're getting close to time. So what did the, what does it actually look like when you submit your ballot by mail, right? Um, so here in California, right, we're getting any registered voter. So someone who's already in the system, right, uh, they're going to get their ballots um, in the mail. So this means you must return by mail and I'll return by mail or drop off at a vote center, which I'll discuss momentarily. So once you have this ballot, I have been guilty of having that ballot for like maybe like two weeks because it does come early. Oh, um, and I've taken my time researching and, you know, and I will always want to vote with my husband. Like we're trying to sit there together. So, and sometimes coordinating our, our calendars is challenging, but this yeah. year is like no other. So we're going to do that like this weekend friends um, to ensure once I get my ballot, it literally goes right back to the mail. And in California, we don't have to have a stamp uh, because the state of California has already made, we as California voters have already invested in a well-funded, um, Secretary of State and our elections process. So we just awesome. drop it right back in, which is something that is not shared with other states. So let me just preface that again. And um, w if, in fact, let's say you just had the ballot like me for two weeks and we're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting nervous. I'm getting nervous. It's cl getting closer to the date and I'd rather physically drop it off, which is 100% okay. 
So in yeah. LA County, we have vote centers throughout the whole county that you, no matter where you live in the county, I can, you can drop your ballot off there. You can vote there as well during the early voting Great. stage, which we'll talk about later. Um, so if I have my ballot, you can literally drop it in the mail, no stamp needed in California, or drop off at any of the vote centers in LA County, because this isn't a neighborhood, you know, I can only drop off at my precinct anymore in California. It's that if I work um, in the San Fernando Valley and live in the San Pedro area of LA County, it's opposite ends of the county, for those oh, okay. for listeners who are unfamiliar, um, you can find, yeah, you can find, I mean, LA County is just huge. So let's just preface that. That's probably why we have these vote centers because yeah. we we live and work in different parts and we're very regional um, right. and that access is really critical. So that begins, the vote centers begin um, Saturday, October 24th. So this is That's two great. full weekends before election day. Sorry, I went on and on with California. <laughs> That's right. They're doing good things. It's important to share with our listeners successful things that other states are doing. Because sure. if yeah. you live in a state that is making it very difficult for you to vote mm. or hiding all the processes, you should you have the right to know that and recognize that mm. as voters, we have the power to change that by voting for different state legislators who make those decisions. So in California, the voters over the course of decades have said, you know, we want to make voting accessible to every people. Yeah. Let's let's put that in our state legislature. And now, boom, you guys have vote centers. That's great. Whereas I'm talking about here in Texas, where, or my home state of Texas, where you have to apply for a ballot by mail. But in California, they just send it to you if you're registered. Like, states are different. We should use our voices to get what we want out of our elected officials. All right, let's move on to Illinois voters who are sending in their ballots by mail. If you live in Illinois, you get your ballot by mail, you've already requested it, you receive it. In order for it to be counted, it should be postmarked by November 3rd. So you can put it in the mail on November 2nd. As it goes through the system, the mail, the mail room, the USPS will put a stamp on it that says we received it November 2nd. That's what's the, that's what postmark means, mm. that the USPS has received it and has started processing it. So before November 3rd, or by November 3rd, excuse me, for Illinois voters. Uh, and we encourage you to send it as soon as you can. Uh, mm-hmm. Send your ballot as soon as you get it. Like one day turnaround would be ideal. Same day would be better. Um, but we recognize that many people might be undecided, if not about the presidential race, then maybe about their mayor or their police chief or whatever. Um, so really, as soon as you get your ballot, do your homework, talk to your the people around you who, who are informed and like have those conversations so you can figure out who you're going to vote for, who you're going to select, and then mail in your ballot as soon as possible. Absolutely. Um, Now, when it comes for our Texas listeners, when it comes to returning your ballot by mail, it must be postmarked by November 3rd by 7 p.m. So you could wake up on November 3rd, which is the Tuesday of election day, and take it, put it in your mailbox and, or or put it, take it to the post office 8 a.m. on November 3rd, and that likely will count. If you put it in your mailbox, but your mail carrier doesn't come by till 10 p.m. on November 3rd, that ballot won't count. So really, again, this is more a, uh, more reason to send it in as soon as possible. You don't want your vote to be not counted just because it didn't get in on time. Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm going to pause because it literally reminded me, this is aging me and millennial style for real. But We're in, getting old, you yeah. We are, but in um, there's an episode of The Simpsons, which is a deadline for the taxes, and Homer goes in, and he's, like, running to the mailbox, and he's dropping it in, like, at, like, 11.59 of Man. April 15th. <laughs> and that's not going to work this time, okay? If you're sliding in November 3rd at, like, 11.59, you're like, I dropped it into the box on November 3rd. That's that this Texas specifically has a time attached. So they're really giving you a clear message that if you don't drop it in early on November 3rd, your vote is, which again, it's kind of like restrictive. It's, yeah, it it is what it is, but it's restrictive. Yeah. And, and, and that's why it's important to do it early, to do it as soon as you can. Um, Speaking of restrictions on voting Mm. recently, last week, the governor of Texas, uh, decided to take action to reduce the number of ballot boxes. So in many states, their uh, election officials are putting like an official drop your ballot here 
box throughout uh, throughout in various locations. And Governor Greg Abbott of Texas recently said, well, for security reasons, we can't have just all these boxes laying around. We got to have one per county. Mm. So, and that's problematic in some ways, in many ways. Um, for example, Harris County, for those who are familiar with Texas, Harris County is the home of Houston, Texas. And Harris County alone has over 4.7 million people. So the governor said one ballot box per county. So one ballot box per 4.7 people, million people, excuse me. One ballot box is not going to fit four and a half million ballots. No way. It's not going to fit two million or one million. That's crazy. Um, so there's obviously concerns. You don't want to be in a position where you're rushing to get to that box. Can you imagine the lines if everybody in Houston's trying to get to that box? These are some shenanigans people pull all over the country to restrict thing, access to the ballot. And it's bad. It's bad. It's wrong. So to avoid your vote being excluded, mm. if you live in Texas and you have a mail-in ballot, don't rely on that box. Send it in ahead of time. Send it in two weeks ahead of time where possible. Send it in a week uh, because it's, it's, it's bad that elected officials are trying to limit how people send in their ballots. Mm. It drives me crazy, but we'll move on. <laughs> I was like, well, speaking uh, of elected and non-elected and yeah. thinking about all the restrictions of who can participate and how we participate, information is not, or is power. Knowledge is power. Uh, and so you tuning in to listen is you are light speeds ahead. And that's why not only advocating for yourself, but also for those around you. And Right. We have the internet. We're trying to make this accessible via podcast for YouTube, on Instagram. Like we're trying to get into all these spaces. But at the end of the day, the most powerful tool is you. And we're excited to prep you and inform you and uh, get you all the resources you need. Yeah, we've we've rambled a bit. So I'll just give a quick bullet rundown of yeah. what a plan to vote means. Yes. Step, step one, register to vote. Step two, apply for your ballot by mail, if that's what you wanna do. Mm -hmm. Step three, research your candidates. Mm. Step four, send your ballot back as soon as possible. Yes. So there's a lot that goes into those four things, uh, but we all have the internet at our, most of us, if you're listening to this podcast, you likely have the internet available to you. Um, you can reach out to us if you have questions by Instagram DM or personal Instagrams or just Beach and Millennial. We're happy to help you with that. Um, and next week we'll be covering, our next podcast will cover voting plans for people who are able and choose to vote in person. So stay tuned if that's your plan. Um, there's lots of considerations for that and we'll cover them next week. Awesome. That's great. Well, with that, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you all for listening to Binche Millennials podcast. This is Binche Participation with your host, Amanda Miguel. And Nico Choa. We'll see you all later. See you all later. Doing the washing machine. <laughs> the pasadito cumbia, hey. <laughs> <laughs>